It's Friday, January 8th. Let's talk Oculus. All right, so we're going to do things a little differently this week. There's only a few news stories, and I'm going to touch on them later on. But as you can see from the title of this video, I have to, have to address the absurd article on the New York Times from the author Shira Ovid titled, VR is not a hit? That's okay. So if you read this article, you can see that it's kind of one-sided and it feels like to be honest that the author hasn't really actually touched a VR system or at least hasn't touched an Oculus Quest system because it seems like it's coming from more of a maybe a PC VR perspective or just maybe one bad experience in VR and moving forward from there. So let me just go on to the article here. She even starts the article with the quote, you may never watch a movie in virtual reality with friends. Which is funny because a few hours ago, I watched the SpaceX launch in big screen. Now, of course, that's not a film, but it was in a movie theater and I was with all these bunch of like like-minded people who love space launches and such. Now, this was pretty surreal for me because my housemates aren't really into that stuff at all. So like, I can't really talk to them about that. But then being in big screen, I was with a bunch of people. We were having a good chat and we were watching the space launch and it was awesome. So I don't know where she's coming from from straight away with the opening sentence. And then the article continuously contradicts itself. It goes on to say, my colleague Kevin confessed his love for strapping on virtual reality goggles. Now just a side note here, I think anyone who refers to VR as VR goggles rather than like a VR headset doesn't really know the VR space. Like I don't think I've ever met or seen anyone on YouTube who actually refers to VR as VR goggles. And um, this like our whole article, like even with like terms like that screams to me that I have not played VR, but because I don't have one, or maybe I've just not really played that much of it, it's probably not a big hit, it's probably a bit of a disappointment, and it's probably not gonna do well, so, nah. And I think my point is backed up when she describes how Kevin looks like when he's actually playing in VR. She quotes, We'll have to take Kevin's word that lunging at virtual flying triangles on his patio is fun, but it is noteworthy because VR has mostly been a disappointment. Like, where do I even begin? I don't even know where to start. The way she describes Kevin's like experience in VR or just what he looks like from looking from the outside in when he's in the headset is just pretty pathetic actually. Just like, okay, this guy just looks like a fool. It must not be good. Which also once again screams to me is like, have you even tried a VR headset? I don't know, like, I feel like everybody who I've put in a VR headset or everyone I spoke to have actually used a VR headset before has always thought, wow, like what an amazing experience or this seems so surreal or this is like anything, nothing that I've ever done before. No one's like, okay, you might be like, okay, you look a bit funny like when you're playing Beat Saber and such, but the way she describes it is more like, you're not looking funny just for the fun of it. It's more like, you just look pathetic. It's like, ah. You look pathetic, what are you doing? And then she goes on to say that VR is a disappointment. I don't think your buddy Kevin thinks it's a disappointment at all, so maybe you should ask him. And also all the new Oculus Quest 2 owners. She quotes in the article a little later on that maybe the COVID pandemic spiked sales just a little bit, just a little bit, but if you looked at the stats, and I talked about this on Let's Talk Oculus last week, the initial sales of the Oculus Quest 2 has actually surpassed Facebook's projections by five times. Five times the amount, which is an insane amount of people now new to the VR system and because of the Oculus Quest 2. I don't know what she's talking about once again. Like this whole article is just very weird and confusing. I don't know where she's come up with this at all. And sure, maybe PC VR headsets are much harder to get into, but that doesn't make them a disappointment. I'm pretty sure the person who spent $2,000 plus on a Valve Index and a PC rig just to play Half-Life isn't going to feel disappointed, you know? I think she's just got the wrong terminology here. I'm really confused, honestly, really confused. My biggest concern is that this is a New York Times article and it's going to be read by thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people around the world. And people like me who've only got like 400 subscribers or big YouTubers like VR Oasis or BMF with 130,000 subscribers. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you got, you're not gonna match the influence of New York Times. 
you know it's just not going to be the same thing so people who are on the fence of vr or just never tried one before might read this article and go oh it's a disappointment it's going like down the trend's going down why would i bother jumping in with this oculus quest 2 headset which is similarly priced if not better priced than the ps5 and the xbox one when it's a bit of a disappointment i'm just gonna buy it and it's probably gonna be a waste of money because it's not gonna like go anywhere that's what it kind of sounds like that's how she puts it in the article like vr is like it's tried and it's probably gonna just trickle down and just drop off the only thing i kind of agree on is that okay vr is not mainstream but it's not mainstream just now it's still in the early development stages and i know it's been a while since like the first vr headset came out for the pc and such but i feel like the pc headsets aren't going to push it to the mainstream just because of the cost barrier where stuff like the oculus quest the oculus quest 2 and hopefully more competitive standalone VR headsets. Even the PSVR is one to look at as well. That's going to push it into the mainstream. And it's important that influencers like myself, even though I'm like quite small, but also people like BMF, Gamertag, VR Oasis, Nathy, like just to name a few. It's important for us to push the system and just us consumers on Reddit and such to push this system further. And articles that are just like one-sided or just in like another bubble like this one it's not going to do any world of good for vr and it's never going to get anywhere if articles like this are published so it's pretty disappointing to see to be honest as a vr enthusiast like myself and i'm pretty sure for you guys watching you're probably feeling the same thing I just wish the author actually had tried an Oculus Quest 2 or even just an original Oculus Quest before she actually wrote this article because I'm pretty sure she wouldn't have labelled it as a disappointment and she would have definitely not considered what Kevin was doing, his her buddy Kevin, as pathetic for the way he was like describing her movements. So yeah, very disappointed but let's just keep going we're just all going to keep going i'm going to try and drive this market forward because vr is absolutely amazing and i know all of you who have tried it 100 percent agree with me anyway that was just my two cents on the matter now onto the actual show of let's talk oculus and xbox game pass had just introduced vr support for a few of its titles as a game pass pc subscriber i was very excited with this news i've not played fight simulator yet which is one of the games that supported but Tetris effect in VR is absolutely stunning with its particle effects and I couldn't recommend this game enough. Game Pass is just $12.99 a month and I'm sure even though that those two games are supported now, there are going to be more in the future that are developed by Microsoft Studios. Also this week, there was a game announcement and a release of the game Mare. It is a third person adventure puzzle game where you guide a young girl through an ancient ruin. It will come to the Oculus Rift soon, but no word on the date just yet. The initial reviews are overwhelmingly positive. A beautiful art style, taking influences from The Last Guardian and Shadow of the Colossus from the PlayStation. According to Upload VR, the puzzles are relatively simple, but you can unlock a secret ending with them and stretch the initial campaign from two hours to three to four. This game looks pretty stunning to me. And although I'm not gonna play it just yet because I have such a backlog and I'm sure a bunch of you guys have after the Christmas sales, this is definitely for one to go and write on the list. Now onto our giveaway, and if you didn't see the video earlier this week, I posted a video about a roguelike strategy game called Asgen VR, which is available on SideQuest. And that takes us to the final part of the show, and that's to announce a giveaway winner. Now, if you haven't seen before, I released a video earlier this week about a roguelike game called Axgen VR. And for those who subscribed and commented on the video, I put a draw in and the winner is this person right here. So for this person, if you want to contact me via Twitter, send me a DM on at playtestv. I'll get that code sent straight out to you. And that's all for me today. Hopefully next week we can go back to normal news and push VR further. I've been Dan. Thank you so much for talking with me and I'll see you in the next one. Hit him out.